Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis and welcome to Living the Wiccan Life. In tonight's episode, I'm very pleased to continue our interviews with cast members from a and E's Paranormal State. In part one of tonight's episode, we bring you Elfie Music, and in part two, case manager Chris Edwards. I'm sure you'll enjoy the interviews. Okay, uh, my name is Elfie Music. I work with the Paranormal Research Society, and we just finished up a field trip here in Salem. And now we get, we're spending a day enjoying the actual town itself. How are, how are you finding Salem? Uh, other than a bit on the rainy side, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been popping in and out of all the various shops. So definitely been trying to get to as much stuff as I can. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the event that you're here doing? Uh, the field trip that we did here was is basically a gathering of people who are not only fans of our show, which was Paranormal State on Amy, but also people who have an interest in the paranormal of uh, learning, of talking about it, and just basically experiencing it through lectures and investigations. And did you have a lot of, uh, of paranormal experiences here in Salem? Actually, we did have quite a few paranormal experiences. We did two investigations. One was at the, the Great Hall, and the other was at the Peabody House. Uh, the first night, which was Friday, we did the investigation at the Great Hall. We actually had Michelle Belanger, who uh, did a talk at our event, uh, do some table tipping. And we actually got some experiences at one point. Um, I, myself, was doing Gonsfeld experiments with some of the uh, guests, and we could hear the table pretty much doing a march across the stage. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun to actually hear that it was working this time. <laughs> Very cool. Mm -hmm. What has been your most favorite, um, what's been your favorite thing here in Salem? Um, actually, one of my favorite things here in Salem is really seeing the nice meld of both the old historic buildings and the new buildings and just how it seems to be kind of bouncing out and also uh, everyone keeps calling this the, the kind of witch city, witch mecca and it has a lot of that but it doesn't feel too oversaturated like I, I was expecting to see someone with a uh, witch's hat on every corner but it's been really nice seeing all the lovely shops and <laughs> too many shiny things for me to see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait till October. There'll be a witch hat on every corner then. Oh. <laughs> but right now, it's, it's very sedate. Mm -hmm. So how did you become involved in paranormal research? Um, my family, I kind of grew up in a very open spiritual um, family. Uh, my father did have an interest in the paranormal, particularly in the 70s and such, but he never got deep into it. But he had books on the subject. I grew up breathing on the paranormal, on the hauntings, poltergeists, witchcraft, occult, everything. But I never really got a chance to actually do investigations until my early 20s when I went to a Penn State group that was just forming the Paranormal Research Society. And it was the first time I actually got to talk with other people with the same interest and really put tests to the field of all the things I've read over the years. And as a paranormal researcher, what has been the biggest challenge you have faced? Um, the biggest challenge for me has really been, one, it's been interacting with people. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit on the shy side, so actually having to talk with clients and really find things out. But actually, the challenge has been also um, getting the evidence and having the patience for it because it's not a simple you go into a dark house and suddenly everything happens. It's really hours upon hours of sitting in a room waiting for EVP or going over evidence. So it's really been a test of patience, hoping to get evidence and not always going to be a guarantee. And what, what is the most memorable experience that you have had uh, with Paranormal State? Um, one of the most memorable experiences I've had was um, ah, was going to the West Virginia State Penitentiary, and um, f f one of the first times actually really being freaked out. I mean, there was there's this place called the Hole that is basically the place where they threw people to punish them, and I got tossed into there for the investigation along with a device that's supposed to kind of amp up the EMF and pretty much make you paranoid. 
That was the first time I ever was really freaked out that I was about ready to run out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, you were mentioning that you come from a metaphysical family. Mm -hmm. How has that affected your life, do you think? Um, with growing up in a metaphysical, very open spiritual family, it affected my life in a sense of I was also kind of in a sense solitary or kind of sheltered. I mean, I didn't get to really interact with other practitioners until my 20s. I mean, there was only a couple members outside my family I knew. So when I kind of hit both like a pagan groups and the paranormal, it was very different because to me this was kind of normal in a sense. This is stuff I heard every day growing up and knew about and it was just almost common. So suddenly encountered this and some people were going, oh my god, I'm if being free, afraid of it. I'm like, what? It, it's nothing. It bumping the night, it's common for me. But it, it was definitely kind of a culture shock for me really. Uh, what is your next big project? Um, Ryan just recently put together, started putting together webinars, which basically is intro to the paranormal, surgery did, evidence analysis and whatnot. So we're hoping that this will be a way to get to more people because they don't have to deal with the travels and such and they can actually watch it over and over again. It's something that doesn't have to be a one-time deal for them. And uh, for myself, I'm trying to expand further on my other interests, which is my art and my paintings and whatnot, and actually get more involved with the community and in the occult that I always have had interest in. Very cool. And I believe you have more field trips coming in the future? Um, at this moment, our next field trip is in November, which is in Gettysburg. Uh, we're still working out the plans in that. Uh, as for the future from that, we don't have any anything quite solid yet. Uh, if people were interested in coming to Gettysburg, where could they get more information? Uh, one of the, the websites would be our main website, which is paranormalresearchsociety.org. Uh, they also can check out our, parano our field trip website, which is uh, parafieldtrips.com, parafield and they can get all the inf information from there as well. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed part one of our program. Join us again for part two in our interview with PRS case manager Chris Edwards.